Welcome, guys, to the 11th episode of the two-player podcast, uh, two-player co-op podcast. I'm player one, Trent. And I'm player two, Craig. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about games, video game news, video game updates, new video games to look out for, everything really related to video games, anything on our mind related to video games. Craig, how you doing, man? I'm good. I, I just been, uh, you know, I just have a little a little thing here. Just oh, a little a, thing. Just uh, yeah, just been uh, kind of diddling around with the, uh, just yeah, just been doing that pretty much every day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I got a PS4 for those who don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, like, uh, that's right. It's right there. Oh man, look at that. Oh, it's from the back. Um, how was your unboxing of the PlayStation Dude, it was 4? What what was so that fun. feel? What was that feel? I can only imagine. It was uh, it was hype. Because I was really excited just to open it up and be like, "Oh my gosh, this is the next gen console," and it just the packaging was perfect, and ah, it was just so much fun. Because like I went to the midnight release too, and that was fun within itself. Like, uh, do you remember Jordan from Comic Con? Mm-hmm. He works at the the GameStop that uh, I went to go pick up my my PS4, at, and we just you know just goofed around for the whole like two hours I was there. Uh, but yeah, it's like. It was just really fun and efficient. I got in, got my PS4, got out. I left like GameStop around like 12:30, and we gave each other BJ's according to Reg, because <laughs> <laughs> I never will get a BJ. But <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was just really fun, and I've been playing it pretty much every day and uh, enjoying it a lot. So you were actually streaming from your PlayStation 4 on our channel, is that correct? I was. Okay, yeah. let's go ahead and see if we can take a look at what you were playing here while you talk about your thoughts on it. Killzone, Shadowfall, what do you think? Oh man, I love Killzone, but I'm really bad at it. Because <laughs> you're like, bad at every FPS ever? I am I was getting dominated. Like, Reggie was watching me, and Scott was watching me. Oh my gosh, Scott, welcome to the, to the, the podcast. I was getting shit on hard. Like, <laughs> I was... It was bad. I I, I I loved it. It looks it looks awesome. The gameplay is really fun. The the multiplayer. I played mostly the multiplayer. Um, just because I I just like to do that. Oh, I'm that guy so you were who doesn't go through campaign. Do- like you were getting like oh man, th- th- this campaign is really hard. You were getting dominated. Like just yeah. complete from A to Z shit on by people who are yeah. better than you at FPS is. Yeah, seriously. For sure, I, sure. I, I I played a little bit of the. Of the uh, the campaign, but I'm more into the uh, the multiplayer just because I like playing with other people and just having that competitive nature and just getting destroyed and having a competitive. Sometimes, like I'd have like a really good game where I'd get like you know two kills and I die like a hundred times. It, it evens out. My kill death ratio isn't that bad. Um, but yeah, I I love Killzone. The story of the uh, campaign from so far what I've experienced is really fun. Um, Basically, the story is the hell gas, the, the bad guys, um, basically come to the planet where uh, the good guys, I can't remember what they're called, the JSV, I believe are what they're named. Um, the, I guess the Americans, let's just call them that. Uh, <laughs> they do like a uh, Israel and Palestine type of thing where like the hell gas are like a part of like this, like this city and they have like a giant barrier between them. And then it, it's just the craziness. Like, you started the campaign as the main character. You're like a little kid, and you're trying because you grew up where they, the Hellgas are now um, stationed, I guess. And you're trying to escape it. Your dad dies, and you're just like, I hate the Hellgas. And it's just, it's just a really fun story from what I've experienced so far. And I, I really love the game. Um, you know, some of the reviews are kind of like, I would say, like in the 70s, 75 ish. It, I, I think it's probably one of the better first-person shooters because, like, uh, well, Call of Duty Ghosts got shit on and Battlefield, I, I don't know what the reviews on Battlefield is right now, but I've heard, you know, mixed things about pretty much every first-person shooter. Well, uh, welcome, Scott, John, right? Um, so, John, uh, Scott's saying it looked pretty. Uh, yeah. Do you agree with that? Like, oh. do you feel the difference between, uh, you know, last gen and this gen? Is it a, a little gap or is it pretty substantial? It's a, it's a substantial gap. I would say the biggest thing is that it's just fast. Like, you, when you go through the menu system, it's just fast. Like, you're able to, like, download games, keep playing games, and, like, there's just so much that you're doing that it's just a really fast interface, and, like, it loads up the games really fast. You don't have to worry about, like, sitting, like, five hours for a multiplayer match or, like, 
even like a minute for it to load up. It's just like instantaneous, and it's just really smooth. Um, I, it's probably one of my favorite things about the PS4 in general. It's just a really fast and smooth experience. Yeah, I mean, looking at the trailer here uh, for Killzone, it, I mean, man, I, I feel like there you, you can tell that uh, there's a lot more processing yeah. power and, and, and memory dedicated to uh, draw distances as, as far as what I'm seeing. I don't know if this is gameplay footage, but it looks it looks like it. And it looks yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, it, it pretty much is. Um, and, ah, man, I am so excited to get my Xbox One. I know Scott, who's in the chat right now, uh, currently... Um, playing Battlefield 4 on his uh, PlayStation 4 and, and and loving that. And I want... And that's the first game I'm going to get until Dead Rising 3 or Rise in the Mill, which will be a little later, I just found mm-hmm. out, uh, for my Xbox One. I'm really excited uh, <laughs> to get my hands on the next generation, try out those Snap apps. Of course, stream a little bit uh, yeah. on our stream with, with the Twitch integrated streaming, which, like we were said earlier, you were using... Um, as far as DC, uh, John, I have played DC Universe, and it's pretty fun uh, for free to play. And I have played it on my PlayStation Three. I thought it was really fun. It's like a, a, a it's not more of the World of Warcraft, right? Yeah. It's more of you do com- combos, mm-hmm. uh, so it's more action oriented as far as an MMO is concerned. And for a free to play, it's pretty fun. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and then, uh, sorry, just reading the chat here a little bit. Uh, uh, I didn't see the guy. I guess somebody uh, put his PS4 in the HD or his Xbox One. He put his PS4 in the HDMI in. He was watching Netflix and playing Killzone 4 at the same time. That's really cool. Welcome <laughs> to Next Gen, uh, where yeah, we can't just be playing a video game. Uh, we have to be doing something else also at the same time. Um, hey, that's what I do whenever I play like, a game on my PC. I just have on one screen, like, Netflix or like a stream and I'll just be playing another game on the other screen so that's just the way it is yeah yeah I mean that's how I do it on the computer here uh, mostly with MMOs or if I'm playing Spelunky I really love yeah. to play Spelunky try to get a really good run while watching a movie at the same time because mm-hmm. Spelunky getting a good run can take forever um, I guess I mean Reggie brought it up earlier in the chat yes uh, I, I took a, a vacation this weekend and yes I'm now engaged uh, no longer <laughs> <laughs> no longer uh, 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 boyfriend girlfriend, I guess. Now we've made that evolution. I'm like, I, I evolved into War Tortle, <laughs> uh, yeah. as far as my relationship is concerned. And then uh, you'll not evolve quite, into yes. <laughs> yeah, Blastoise. I don't know what you would consider Mega Blastoise. I guess that's a polygamous relationship. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's um, polygamous. It only lasts a while. <laughs> <laughs> only lasts one battle, one yeah, divorce. And then, then the government comes in. They're like, hey, stop that. <laughs> Um, and Reggie's wanting to be the maid of honor. I think Audrey will be okay with that. Um, <laughs> and you look great in this sequin dress as well. Um, <laughs> as far as uh, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll get that news out of the way. As far as what games I've been playing, I don't, I don't know if you've played. Uh, it, it was released recently on Steam. It's called King Arthur's Gold. Have you heard of this game? Yeah, isn't it kind of like uh, oh, what's it called? The, what's the Minecraft game? But it's Terraria. It's like, yeah, Terraria. It looks like well, I like Terraria, but yeah. it's like, like class-based system. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get a a video of it up here, uh, see what we can do as far as that's concerned. But it is a super, super lot of fun, man. I'm I'm telling you, like, uh, oh, geez, you know, I tell you what, with this select regions, um, basically, uh, it, it's sort of like um, Terraria, except it's more capture the flag based. It's mm-hmm. more um, um, domination. Think of like where you're trying to get, uh, you know, capture bases and sort of Call of Duty ish. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you need to hold it down. Uh, that's sort of what like this game is like. And it is a lot of fun. I'm going to get the gameplay trailer up in a few seconds here, I promise. Um, what, what classes are in the, uh, the game? So there's a. Have you ever played Fat Princess uh, uh, for the PlayStation I, 3? It's PlayStation 3 exclusive. Come on, Craig. I know I've I've wanted I I haven't wanted to play, but I've like I've heard things about how good it is and stuff like that because it's just like it, I, I guess it's kind of like a MOBA type of game if that makes like it looks like a MOBA type of game, but yeah not. yeah it's it's so uh, for those who don't know Fat Princess you can be like a priest a warrior it's 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 class based and you can be a builder 
thank and and thank you scott i, I appreciate that seriously thanks man it is about time um but as far as uh, king arthur's gold you can be a builder so you can build all, all all those you can build traps you can build doors and walls and then mine uh buy it by drill and sort of like mine for stone uh, you can be a warrior and upgrade get a shield get different like uh, power-ups you can buy bombs to blow up people's bases you can build boats and catapults as a builder and rams and there's also archers who can who can buy fire arrows to burn down wooden structures and uh, uh and, and bomb arrows uh yes it is multiplayer uh it is like 10v10 actually i think i saw a game of 25 versus 25 oh my gosh, on a really big map on, on one server um and i was playing and it's i mean they have a tutorial mode they have a single player mode and challenge mode uh single player and then you just go onto servers online and you play against other people uh and it it, it can it's really it, there's a there's a learning curve especially i feel like if you're going to play the game you're definitely going to want to play as probably a soldier uh, because you can kind of get into the fray you can you can like slowly guide a uh, glide with your shield and there's all these kind of uh, uh, gameplay mechanics to master there's sharks in the ocean which is pretty cool um and this game is a lot of fun i would love if a few of my friends reggie uh hint hint uh, nudge nudge uh if they would get this game to play play with them because i feel like uh, it's it's a lot more fun than fat princess fat princess had you buying and building you know certain things but this is like completely creative you can build anything as far as a, a turret or a tower or a defense mechanism and then you can build uh things to siege and you can and you're like well you know what i don't want to blow up their tower i don't want to do anything like that so you just dig underneath it right and you're like oh no they're, they're they're drilling underneath us and then you have to build countermeasures really quick uh it's really yeah i do have 16 hours logged on it it's a lot of fun um like i said it does kind of have a, a steep learning curve i feel like for the builders because you're like holy shit i don't know what anybody's doing they're just going at it i guess i'll just be i love being an archer you can have a grappling hook as an archer and you can just kind of get up tall towers with that and you can also climb trees as an archer so if a warrior's running at you you can climb a tree and they can't get after you so there's all these different th gameplay mechanics it's a lot of fun um and i mean it looks beautiful I it, like it's the way it looks. it's awesome like you said it's sort of like terraria uh in that sense and then uh uh yeah i i was one to for you guys to listen to a little bit but i guess i'll just mute it um it, it's it's a lot of fun man it's uh like i said it, it i think it was like 10 to 15 dollars on scene not quite sure i think I, I i think i bought it for 10 um so it, it's a lot of fun it is 10 dollars and um i i highly recommend it also i have another recommendation uh i finally bought this game and i need reggie to play it with me and i need craig to play it with me we need to just this game we all need to come together and just have a night playing this game and it's called dive kick uh this oh game my gosh. is addicting and there's only two buttons uh there's jump and kick and uh uh, it's it's actually pretty complicated, uh, surprisingly. There's a lot of um, mind games in, in it, um, and each character has their own unique abilities. Uh, dive, there's dive, and then there's kick, which you see on the screen right there. They're kind of like mm -hmm. Ryu and Ken of the game. They're very straightforward. But then other characters, oh they can change their trajectories. Um, th those guys that you just saw with the lightning kicks, like they'll they'll kick through you but it's only the lightning that hurts you so you can like stay in the air to dodge it um what's really great about mm -hmm. it is that there's a lot of fighting game uh i guess you could say celebrities in it like mark man who was a fighting game player who now works for mad cats um there's jabaley from florida who runs the ceo fighting game tournament uh he's called jafali in this and every time he wins a match uh, his head gets bigger and bigger because he's known for his ego, <laughs> so you can headshot him more easily. Um, and then there's S Kill, which is short for Seth Killian, who used to be one of the uh, Capcom like quality assurance guys when he was creating Street Fighter 4. And it's really funny. Uh, he's towards the beginning here, and I'm trying to see. Uh, I wish you could. I'm, I'm going to try to get his stance really quick. See if we. Uh, he's on the left. Let's see if he has his stance before he parries Jafali. Uh It's going to be right here so like all right there yeah, yeah on the left so jafeli's on the right you see his head's huge he's the guy does ceo and on the left uh he he kind of plays an arcade stick like devin 
where he crosses his hands. So oh, instead of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so instead of using his left hand to move the joystick, he uses his right hand. So he crosses his hands, and uh, <laughs> that's his stance when he's just going there. He just kind of goes like this. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You wouldn't think with two button game there'd be much to it, but I can just see this. You take it to somebody's house, and you just ha you know just run through a bracket or something and be like. Okay, top eight, top grand finals, and then it's so much fun. Because it's not, I mean, it's pretty in-depth, to be honest. You have gems, so you can have plus 10 to kick, uh, plus 10 to, to uh, dive, <laughs> or, or what have you. And then there's also meters, as you can see on their shoes, and they have different special abilities. So there's a lot more to take in than you would think, but it also keeps it really, really uh, simple, right? Uh, and it's, it's a bunch of fun. Like Reggie's saying in chat right now, um, he had a great time with it. Ten, uh, I got it on cheap on the Humble Store, uh, which I don't know if we've talked about, Craig. But Humble Bundle. No, I don't think we have. Humble Bundle, right? Humblebundle.com, which is something that we talked about. It's a, it's a website where they'll bundle games on the cheap. Uh, usually independent games, but not too uh, long ago, there was the Humble WB Bundle. Which, so that was pretty high profile games like Arkham City and, and Arkham Asylum going for really cheap. I think you could get like eight WB games, including, Ricky, I don't know if you saw. Um, Gotham City Imposters, uh, Arkham Asylum Game of the Year Edition, Arkham City Game of the Year Edition, all for four dollars and fifty cents on PC. You can get them all, along with Scribble Knots and, and a couple other games. Mm -hmm. There, really good deal. Uh, so, and that only those kind of bundles only come like every two weeks, right? And then you have the Humble Weekly Sale, which is every week, and now they have the Humble Store, where every day there's new sales for games. And that's actually where I picked up Dive Kick. Uh, is is one of those daily sales. I've also in the meantime, picked up Hammer Watch, which is on sale right now for four dollars and fifty cents, which is one of those games that you and I have talked about before on the cast, which we wanted to mm -hmm. play together. Now I have it. It was four dollars and fifty cents. Why not, right? Um, Me Meat Boy and Hotline Miami are both on sale right now as well, oh, which really? which are terrific games. Um, I I believe I bought one more, and I guess I can't remember what it is, um, <laughs> which is sad a little bit. I think it was Gunpoint. No, I, I bought Gunpoint earlier. Uh, I'll have to see what it was. In fact, I'm just going to check my email right now. Um, yeah, if, if you don't own Hotline Miami or, or Super Meat Boy, definitely worth your purchases. Uh, I can't recommend those enough. Um, I mean, have, have you looked at the new Humble Bundle store, Craig? I haven't. I just, like, yeah, I haven't looked at it since lately. Um. Gunpoint. Yeah, Gunpoint is what I bought. So there's that, um, which is an awesome game. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I, it's Humble Bundle. I mean, you can get really great games there, and then the Humble Bundle store. It's like it's like crack for me. It's like Steam sells every day. <laughs> I mean, how could how could you Cops. go wrong? Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, Steam sells. <laughs> uh, yeah, Steam sells are going to come out be coming up soon. Very soon. I think it was what uh, just two days in a week. I think uh, next Wednesday mm -hmm. is what's rumored. Um, and of course, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I'm not too afraid of Steam sales anymore. I feel like most of the s games that go on sale, I've already bought. In. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> um, and hopefully, uh, yeah, I really hope King Arthur's Gold and Dive Kit go on sale soon. They're really yeah, cool seriously. games. Um, and I think, you know, um, I, I think I got Dead Rising 2 on sale as well. And uh, I'm going to play that before Dead Rising 3 comes out. I think I'll stream it, too. So we'll have that to look forward to. Am I right? Am I right? Um, I know. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Fun it's, times. Did you get any other PlayStation 4 games uh, experience? Anything I got Knack. else? What'd you get? Knack. That oh, Knack. We played that really at San fun. Diego Comic Con. Mm hmm. I really like it. It's, it's a, just a fun platformer game. It looks gorgeous. So good. I. And it's just fun, just really fun to play. And then there's a, there's also a Rezo Gun too. Um, it's like a free game you can get if you have PlayStation Plus off of their network. And it's just like a I'm trying to think what it's like. Uh, it just reminds me like a like a oh just like a shooter game because basically you're like in a ship and you go around in circles. Oh, um, like a a, a, sh a bullet hell kind of game maybe. It's kind of like a bullet hell type of game. Uh, where you go, like obviously you go around in a circle, and like as you're you're trying to save these humans that are trying that are being abducted by these aliens, it's really fun. I think it's like fifteen dollars if you don't have PlayStation Plus, but if you have PlayStation Plus, it's free. 
and they give you like a month free when you first uh, now, get the uh, PlayStation 4. Now, on, on PlayStation 4, you have to have PlayStation Plus, right? To, to uh, have online. To have online. Uh, yes, to have online, like, if you want to play, like, multiplayer games, yes. But you don't have to have it if you want to, like, stream, like, if you want to, like, watch Netflix or anything like so that. You don't nice. have to have it. Yeah. Now, let's talk about this. So, I don't remember which day. Uh, I think it was when I was on my vacation. They released an Uncharted teaser video, did they not? Mm, they did. It was on Thursday. Um... Uh, Craig, really quick, did you get a move for your PlayStation 4? Is that the camera? I believe it's the. Well, I don't know. You're the Sony guy. Let me let me see here. Uh, PS4 move. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, yes. I, I did not get the move. Um, just because, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I really don't see myself needing the camera. Not yet, anyway. I mean, for I could. It's only fifty bucks, so it's not that big of a deal. But well, at least that's the good thing with being an Xbox One purchaser because it just comes with everything. I don't have to worry about another accessory um, as far as that goes. Uh, let's. Go, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this GIF that uh, Reggie linked. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah, we're definitely not putting that on the stream. Um, dun, 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 dun. The camera is really... Uh, I like the idea of what the camera is capable of in the sort of uh, virtual reality kind of 3DS thing mm -hmm. that it does. Um, I'm really excited to see what the Kinect is capable of as well uh, in the future. And uh, we'll, we'll see. I really need my Xbox One. I just need to have my hands on it, you know. Uh, I really need mm -hmm. to play it. Um, I'm just excited to see, like, what it's like for, like, the streaming interface. Because, like, the streaming interface for the PS4, it's okay. Like, it's not, like, awesome. Hey, let me ask you like, about I, that. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, capabilities are you able to do as far as streaming? Can you rearrange? Can you import images? Like, let's say for our two-player co-op uh, logo, for example, are you able to import that into the streaming, or is it bare bones uh, chat, webcam, and then? As far as I know, it's just bare bones chat, web webcam. That's it. Like, if you had the PlayStation Move, you can use that to like capture your face and whatever in the background, and it only shows like two uh, lines of chat per. I don't know, whenever people are chatting. So it's like, yeah, it's all right. Like, that's why I got a capture card, so that way I can just, you know, stream my PS4 to my PC and then just be able to do the normal things that I have, like, you know, have X, uh, Hex chat up and just have the window up and everything and just be able to play my game on, like, monitor right here without having to really, like, have make it a big deal. I don't know. I, I It's okay. I wouldn't say it's, like, amazing, but it's, like, nice to be able to have people who are casual about streaming like some people like just want to just do it every once in a while i think it's a cool feature but i wouldn't necessarily say it's like for, for professional people you know like well, you won't course. see man versus game do it or anything like that no he has two pcs for streaming yeah. he doesn't need uh uh this inbuilt function but it's a step in the right direction mm -hmm. um hopefully through software updates they can sort of manage that as far as importing your own stuff and making it look more professional I mean, it's supposed to be a multimedia uh, machine anyways, so I, that's where I see it going as far as that. Reggie, also, I am hyped for the Kinect. Um, uh, I th man, I'm, yeah, we both sat together, and we both saw the Xbox demonstration at San Diego Comic-Con and the things that they can do. I think mm -hmm. I might buy Forza Motorsport based off of... Forza looks awesome. I, I, I've heard so many good things as an experience. It, they, people keep saying as an experience for next-generation gaming, it is... It's something to 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 to, to get basically mm -hmm. for your Xbox One. It utilizes the haptic feedback on your uh, controller really well, is what I hear. Uh, it, the graphics look. I'm so ha I'm so excited. It's been so long to be able to look forward to a new console and be like, yes, I want to see these beautiful new graphics. Because I mean, we'll talk about how graphics, you know, they don't make a good game, but it's nice to see beautiful graphics from time to time. Well, and you can nice certainly appreciate like it. It's the next gen console, and like you expect to be able to be like amazed by the graphics, and like I'm amazed by how fast and smooth it is, and how much you're able to see, and like just from a console, that's just amazing. Like normally with like a PC, like I'm able to like have like the highest quality and just have just all the graphics turned up, but like with the console, it's like I it's just I've always thought like okay PC and then console, and it's like. It's it's like obviously catching up, and it'll be really cool to see what's going to happen in the next like uh, three years when like all of those 
a bunch of like companies are starting to make games for the PS4 and the Xbox One to see what like they can truly get from the next gen console, kind of like how they have with the PS3 and the Xbox 360, who have been, you know, almost 10 years old. <laughs> yeah, no joke. And you know, I gotta say, now that I've uh, saved up and purchased a, that engagement ring, um, I think I'm gonna start. I'm gonna keep overtime. I'm gonna build a new rig, man. Yeah. Uh, really, and then get like a capture card and a good graphics card, and really catch up because this thing is, it's what six and a half, five and a half, six years old at this point, which is pretty bad. Um, well, I mean, it's not terrible, but it, it's getting up there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've had to replace so many parts to keep it going as it is. So, um, yeah, I want to get a new one. You should look it up. I want the Phantom case. Uh, the Phantom it, case. Oh yeah. I think I it's like the Phantom Six Twenty is what they call it. Um, and you can look. You guys can look that up. It is sweet. I love it. So the white case, the white phantom. Uh, find that on new. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna get originally. Yeah, it's it's super cool. I, I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, but hopefully we can get that going and do some better, more high quality streaming. Mm-hmm. At at more frames per second. Let's be honest, because yeah, my computer can do it, but it can't do it that great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so what do you say, man? Do you want to get into some Kickstarters here? Uh, discuss a few games, yeah? Yeah, let's yeah. talk about some Kickstarters. All right, all right, all right. Let's get this up here. Hopefully, you know, um, I am a failure when it comes to uh, getting these up here because I always switch between my internet browser and I should get, just get a new <laughs> window up. And every time I switch between a new window, it's like, well, we, we can't find it anymore. We don't, we don't know what you're doing. Uh, you need to be better at streaming to begin with, but whatever um so basically uh there's a few kickstarters and craig i don't I, I, do you remember um night in the woods yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, did you did you end up kickstarting that at all i did you did so i ended up actually checking in with uh night in the woods and i don't believe reggie was here for it so why don't we go ahead and show that i'm, I'm really interested in showing that um if if of course if and when I can go ahead and get that up. If it wants to. Do you know, I, I, I've actually tried, this is my third time getting the right regions, and it's just like, well, we don't really want to show it. So so you can just deal with uh, with how annoying it is to deal with technology. Um, what? So was Night in the Woods sort of like a story-based game? Was it not fair? Yeah, it was correctly? a story-based game where uh, you play as a character who essentially dropped out of school. <laughs> and uh, you just kind of go through a normal life and it like it just looks really fun. Like your your main character is like a is like a cat. Uh, you drop out of school and you just go back to hometown. You just do like normal everyday things that people do, uh, and it it just looks really beautiful. I mean, look how smooth those an- that animation is. It's a the smooth animation as, like, is butter. It looks like a, a Saturday morning cartoon. Like I said it last time, it looks like a Saturday morning cartoon show. Mm-hmm. Like I would love to see a cartoon show with this type of animation. It is so dang gorgeous. And to think this is a video game and it's interactable in some way is is sort of far out there. And not only that, but this... I mean, I guess you wouldn't think that this would be from a large studio to begin with, but it's large studio quality or or, or has that ambition behind it. But it makes sense as far as the art style and, and the execution that it's it's done from Kickstarter and independent uh, video game developers. Um, when I checked in on this, uh, it has 63 hours to go, which is not a lot, um, a little over two days. And it had a goal of $50,000. It's up to $181,000 right now. No, it's so crazy. That's a lot, man. And and I remember when you and I talked about this a couple episodes ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Not surprising. Um, not surprising at all. Um, I mean, it has beautiful... I mean, look at those screenshots. I mean, that's in-game stuff. And you just would not expect that. Um, do you remember what? Did you just buy the game? Like the the? I just got the standard. I think it was like twelve bucks or ten dollars or fifteen. I can't remember. Um, and I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I what's really strange is they don't have uh, a stretch goal kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I can't see one. And I'm wondering what they're gonna do with the extra hundred and ten thousand dollars that they made. <laughs> like that's a lot. And it, yeah, fifteen dollars is the full copy of the game, which is worth it. I mean. Mm-hmm. Gosh, those graphics. And I'm, and because you got it, you know, I'm not going to. Uh, but I'm really excited to see you play it or maybe get a hand on it 
uh, myself, mm -hmm. maybe through Steam game sharing, if ever that happens. Um, and here's to hoping that it does. <laughs> but, I mean, you don't really need to support it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it killed it. It killed it. Uh, I just wanted to bring that up again for those who are interested in it, and uh, and 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 really don't miss how beautiful the game that was. I mean, it looks so pretty. Um, now we're, let's talk about some uh, uh, other Kickstarters, yeah. Yes. Uh, that are newer. New let's talk about Catacomb Kids. Have you heard about this? Have you seen it, Craig? Uh, Catacomb Kids. No, I haven't, but I already love it from that <laughs> just that that screen right there. I already know I'm gonna like this game. Sure. So 21 days ago. Eight thousand dollars met of twenty thousand. Let's go ahead and watch the trailer for it. Um, it's got really simplistic uh, pixel graphics, which you know can can be hit and miss for me. Uh, which, what when, when I'm seeing this, when I, uh, you know, as far as the opening, I'm like, okay, that's fine. But it's actually the gameplay and, and the fluidity of of how this game looks that actually got me, and the way in which you explore. It's roguelike, Craig. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that out oh there. Oh my gosh. And. Uh, I love the way he just uses chain lightning right off the bat to, to, to uh, mm. you know, kill two guys. And then, I don't know, he's kind of jumping here and he's, oh, and then death just comes and <laughs> and uh, does 10 damage to him and then he gets oh my splattered. Um, so it, it looks like sort of Spelunky as far as how brutal the dungeons can be, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see here, it's just going to do a montage of things that are possible. Um, there's... Uh, customizing your character getting new items and magic spells and uh it looks pretty dang cool if we go down here uh you, ten dollars get you an entrance fee that's really it's really uh you know the the standard as far as that goes um i agree uh, uh reggie it is very castlevania-esque uh as far as but it's random as well so every every dungeon is random and every time you play it which is really cool as you can see on the art here Really awesome, very Adventure Time inspired. I feel like it really is, yeah. Um, with how that's going, and if you go down here, you can see they have the Adventure Time look to them. And I believe it's the same guy who's developing the game is doing this art, so he's got he's got some talent there. Um, I mean, he he does, yeah. I mean, look how Adventure Time that is, just right mm -hmm. there. Um, I love the way he represented all the goals, so you can. There's a lot for you to digest there, and he's got some screenshots here, and and there's a a look of you know equipment and spells, and customizing your guy, Farley J level ten disciple. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, Craig, there's strength, defense, speed, magic, intelligence, oh and luck. Oh my gosh! So you're done. Yes, I'm done. I'm just like, here's my money, and just to put. How do I put it in the CD tray? <laughs> Co -op? Let's see. I, I don't think so, to be honest with you. I think it's just single player. Um, multi did not have any hits when I controlled F, and co op did not either. Yeah, it is. I know playing multiplayer in this day and age or having that option, it's very important. It, it, it's, it's huge. Um, unfortunately, um, I guess it's 18% complete, so you never know. Maybe he'll add a lot more as time goes on. Yeah. I would really like to see. Uh, yeah, let's scroll to the bottom. See, in fact, uh, what platforms will be released on? I can't use Amazon Payments. Just who is working on the scene? Can I play with the controller? And when will Alpha be available to backers? I really don't think... Because uh, as you can see here, it looks more like a single-player RPG. Um, and this vein right here, this screen, it looks like he's planning for a single-player. If, if I had to guess, you don't typically see this kind of thing in in uh, multiplayer games. I love the map, though. Like like uh, Reggie was saying, very Castlevania-esque. Yeah, it is. I like that a lot. And I also like the... Uh, oh, I just love how hard it looks. Because it reminds me of a... Like, it looks like Terraria with like Spelunky just extremely hard. And like, just look at it right now, I, I assume like, the customization is very similar to like Dark Souls where it's like you start off like as a, as like a certain class but then you can level up however way you want to. And I think it's awesome. Yeah, and as you can see here, like Shadow Cloak one to MP, so you'll be able, to, you know, you can apply that you'll be able to get um, equipment. Which I mean, equipment in numbers is what Craig's all about. In the first few seconds of the video, they show him using Chain Lightning. As you can see, Death here, which is very real presence, reminds me a lot of Splunky as far as Death. I mean, it's kind of like the ghost. There are bats, there are traps, so it's very. I mean, there's there what look like goblins right there, uh, Grumbles, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, health, awesome. you can get health back, so maybe not so as 
uh, I mean, it can be really similar to Splunky. Any roguelike game has infinite playability, replayability as far as, I mean, if you can, if you really think about it. Um, so this, I, I found this game and I was like, this looks really cool. Um, it, it, it looks, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd back it. Uh, I, I know I kind of want to, but I feel mm -hmm. like I'd back so many. There's just going to be this day where all of these Kickstarter games that I've done are going to come in and be like, oh, I don't have time to play at all. Uh, and uh, Scott, welcome back. Uh, we're just in the Kickstarter portion, um, just going over Catacomb Kids. I'll go ahead and replay the video for you because um, it's only a minute. Why not, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and we can sort of uh, tear it apart too as well. I sort of with Reggie here, I kind of wish they would do multiplayer. I mean, what do you think? Do you think this has the capacity to be multiplayer? I think it does. Uh, we'd, I still like in its early phase, and I'm sure if like the guy is really successful with any Kickstarter, they'll end up doing like, oh, we've met our goal, we're making more money, let's uh, do more, you know, uh, what do they call them? Freaking... I can't think of the term right now. I'm so bad at Kickstarters uh, right now. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Um, as far as like stretch, goal, like stretch goals? Yeah, stretch goals. Like We might do another stretch goal where it's like, oh, hey, we made our goal. If we make this much money, we'll uh, get more multiplayer. To be so. honest, stretch goals really sell me on games because I'm like, oh, man, if I donate this much, I'll be that much closer to that kind of gameplay mechanic, which I really like. Mm -hmm. I would love to see a multiplayer aspect like, uh, like Reggie is saying, Spelunky style. Um, or think about it, like a two, a, a side-scrolling Gauntlet Legends. Think about it that or way. Or even like uh, Castlevania on the Xbox, remember that? Oh yeah, Cas uh, Castlevania HD or Castlevania Harmony of Despair, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome, especially, really um, you know, where it was just exclusively has to be on different screens. So mm -hmm. it doesn't split. That was fun. I mean, I think that was the first game-playing experience I had with you, in fact. Yeah, it was our first gaming experience. I remember yeah. specifically uh, over Xbox Live that your wife made you cookies during this, and yeah. being like, "Dang!" And then I remember Reggie or uh, Audrey also made cookies, and Zane was <laughs> the only one who had, didn't get cookies made for him that <laughs> night. <laughs> that was that was great. That was a good memory. Um, Catacomb Kids ten dollar entry fee for kickstarting. Uh, he's got a lot of cool stuff as far as um, I mean, he's got the typical stuff behind the scenes, original soundtrack. Mm -hmm. You know, as you go up. Uh, he, he, physical copy, sort of things like that. His two hundred and forty dollar is a short animated loop of a character of your choice, uh, doing a combo or casting a spell and being awesome, and a physical flip book of the animation, which is pretty cool. That's really uh, a cool. physical flip book. That's that's kind of cool. Um, ten dollar entry fee. What do you think? Uh, Kickstart or not? Um, Kickstart uh, or kickstop? Kickstart or kickstop? Ah, freak. Um, I would. Jeez. Uh, I really want to say Kickstart, but I would say Kickstop just because uh, I, I like multiplayer. It's a huge thing. Like I would say, one to sixty because I'd love to play it. I guess I would say Kickstart, and I don't plan on Kickstarting it, but I would say. Well, you can play awesome. it. You can buy it, right? You can yeah. buy it at a later time. We're not saying that you don't have to do that, but we're talking about this phase. Will you? Would you want to Kickstart it? Oh, I definitely would want to Kickstart it. Just because it looks really fun, it looks difficult, and that's what a big, that's like a huge sell for me. If and the it's game a rogue looks like. hard, rogue I would buy it. Roguelikes are always fun for me. Mm -hmm. I, I love them because it's just like, what's gonna, what, you know, it, there's no, I'm just gonna memorize the map. Uh, you can't uh, in roguelike games, which is great. Um, I think I'm gonna wait on this. Uh, I like to see him do a little some stretch goals. I like to see him do some more incentives before uh, I would give money to him. So I'm gonna say kicks. Wait. <laughs> Yeah, kick weight. Kick weight. Um, so let's go to the next one then, yeah? Yeah, you ready yeah, for it? Yeah, let's do that. Move uh, on to the next Kickstarter. Let's see. This one is called Mansion Lord. Uh, this is like an RPG for Clue. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's sort of like a uh, whodunit mis murder mystery. Uh, and it's an RPG business sim game with pixel art style. <laughs> That's Give so cool. Give me a break. <laughs> I know that this is going to be a little more niche as far as, um, y you know, demographic is concerned. Yeah. Uh, me, personally, I mean, just right there, that screen, that's Kyrosoft to me. That looks very Kyrosoft-esque. Oh, yeah, seriously. And I'm like, I'm sold, man. I'm all about the Kyrosoft stuff. Um, 
you, you run your very own murder mystery mansion. Um, this has a goal of $28,000. It's brand new. It's got 29 days to go. As you can see, you can build desks right there, sort of, you know, money management. Adding globes. Very, very Clue-esque. Um, it's got $2,000, which is pretty good in a day, <laughs> really. And there is a murder. Oh, man, and he blew up like Mega Man. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, no. oh that, yeah, I just saw it right now, yeah. <laughs> nah, that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. It's it's, it's kind of quirky. I was looking through Kickstarters, and there's not a lot that we haven't already gone over or hasn't mm -hmm. been uh, funded already. And I kind of try to want to shy away from the games that have already been funded because I feel like, you know, what's the point there? I yeah. Mean, I, want, I mean, this is brand new. Um, it's not typical of and, and, and there's an rpg uh, battle with numbers craig what do you think oh, my oh gosh. there's also a cat uh going uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um this is is very quirky i feel like um mm -hmm. as, as far as this goes um if you go down here it's gonna be on windows and mac and, and ps vita of course i need a vita dude i'm so yes. sick of this like 3ds is great it's mm -hmm. great. I, I've played my 3DS, especially since Pokemon came out, way more than I ever have. Uh, but PS Vita is all about... I mean, you can play Spelunky and Hotline Miami and all these different Kickstarter games on PS Vita. i got to be a part of it. And a bunch of indie games are going towards the PS Vita because it really is like a great way for you to play your games, like your indie, like all those indie games in a portable way. Um, like, I don't know. Like if you watch the Sony conference where they just talked about, hey, we just have a bunch of uh, indie games coming out, and they talked about how like it's gonna be on the PS4 and on the PS Vita and the PS3. It, it's just, it's just I, I'm a huge Sony fanboy for that reason because like I have these things and I love these games, and there's gonna be more games that I'm really excited about that they're just gonna put on the PS Vita that are indie games that support small developers that want their games to be known, and Sony is helping them get out there essentially. Right, right. And I and I gotta I gotta agree with you and sort of hand it to Sony because of that and it really makes me want to buy a PS Vita and by extension, uh buy a PlayStation four to go along with that, right? Maybe down mm -hmm. the road. I mean X I'm gonna concentrate on my Xbox one for now. Uh but as you can see here, uh this this is what I'm talking about, stretch goals, incentive. Achievements, mm -hmm. ghost extermination system, that sounds pretty uh unique. Expended story quest lines, fine, great. Zombie outbreak mode. Zombies always make things better, right, Craig? Yep. iPad version. Now, Lord versus Lord mode sounds like a that sounds a head-to-head cool. -head battle, which I don't mm -hmm. know how would that would work, but you have me intrigued. Uh, and then, of course, a PS Vita version at seventy-five thousand, and a Wii U version. At a Wii U version of this game probably be cool, really cool. And that's the yeah, thing too. Cool. Nintendo, uh, it's it, they're bypassing 3DS and, and instead of going to Wii U. Have you noticed that with a lot of these Kickstarters? Um, I, what was the last Paradise Lost that we did on last episode? Yeah, was going to do a Wii U as well, and that game again would look freaking sweet on Wii U. Um, so you can create your mansion one piece at a time, which is really cool. Grid base. There's tactical turn-based combat. I don't know how that would work in a Lord versus Lord mode, uh, but you can claim bounty money by defeating killers. Uh, there's a database system, RPG character upgrading. There you go, Craig. Uh, Earning XP, updating their equipment, teaching them new skills, increasing their happiness with gifts, and even building them their own so, bedroom. Oh, it's so cool. Endless roguelike encounters. That's the future, man. It, oh, it's man. just left and right. That's, that's just what it is. Um, it's replay. Yeah. That's why. Uh, instead of some old-fashioned dungeon, I mean, just detect us to the death. Uh, abandoned basement levels to clear out ghouls below. The deeper you go, the bigger the dangers and the rewards, of course. That's, that's classic, like, um, Dragon Quest-style stuff right there. Uh, social bond system and a chip tune soundtrack. So you have Dracula and you have Must Colonel Mustard and anime guy and anime girl. Um, <laughs> and I love the pixel art. Reminds me of older. It looks like this looks like a, a Super Nintendo game uh, that never got released in America. Yeah, <laughs> is, is basically what it looks like. Ten dollars is gonna get you the game. I mean that's uh, that's usually what it is, you know. And uh, if the corresponding stretch goals are met, the following pop up will also become available: iPad, PS Vita, and Wii U. I uh, so you you can just choose one of the goals, right? You can't just get Windows and I and PS Vita for a good reason, you know, mm -hmm. especially with Kickstarter. And then there's a bunch of other stretch goals: um, four thousand dollars be in the game. 
uh, as the reclusive previous master of the house. That would be really cool. And will be written to the backstory of the world and make cameo appearances at key story junctures. That that's awesome. I mean, that's four thousand. I don't know if it's four thousand dollars awesome, but it's 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 awesome. It's cool. Um, now, again, like I said, ten dollars again to the game. What what do you think? Kickstarter. Uh, Kickstarter. I I think it's cool. I don't know if I would put money down initially. I would kick weight. I'd kick weight. Kick weight. You you, you feel yeah. like it, it's intriguing, but not intriguing enough to to kickstart. Yeah, kick weight for sure. Okay, because I mean. Kick, kick, wait until it comes out on Steam and buy it at a later time. I mean, <laughs> okay. I, I feel the same. I mean, it's not something that I want to kickstart. Maybe if I felt like I had to save it to get funded. Uh, I think it's going to do fine, though, if it's made $2,000 in a day. Yeah. And I'll just check it out later. It's on, did it, it was on Steam. Yeah, you can vote for it on Steam Greenlight, which. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll probably do. Why not just do it? Uh, I'm not going to do it in the. Steam browser. <laughs> Just do it right now. <laughs> no, I hate Steam browser. Only use Steam. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's cool, and I like the the risk style of it. Mm-hmm. But maybe at a later time, right? Maybe at a later time. Um, there is one. Well, I mean, we could talk about a couple more things. We have some time here. Um, I'm just gonna look up. Uh, uh man, what was that game called? That we just talked about Mansion Lord. Uh, buy it, you know, Kickstarter for ten dollars and you get the game, or you can just wait. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, go green light it in a little bit here. There is another game that came out on Steam along with King Arthur's Gold that I bought um, just because uh, my, uh, I guess my soon-to-be little brother-in-law, but uh, Audrey's brother, my fiance's brother, um, he's twelve, and we bought it because he likes Terraria, and I was like, hey, you can watch me play this and see how you like it. But the other game I almost bought instead of it, it's called uh, Risk of Rain. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't. I'm going to look it up right now, though. And I'm going to go ahead and play the video of it on. It looks so cool. And I know that we've been talking about roguelike, right? And if, for those who don't know, roguelike is a random dungeon that spawns every time you play the game, making it a unique uh, experience every time you play. And that is what this game is as well. Um, it's, oh gosh, I've seen this game. Yeah, That's it's awesome. Uh, again, it's called Risk of Rain. Um, it's it's I want to say like a two D side scrolling Borderlands. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? You're gonna yeah. find uh, a bunch of different items and weapons. Uh, you're gonna battle monsters and, and do different amounts of damage to them. As it says, the longer you play, the harder it gets. Um, you can find all kinds of different relics, and I mean, a lot of people are going to compare it to ter- Terraria because it's side-scrolling pixel art, right? Um, I, I think it's a little t- too far removed. I wouldn't call it very similar to Terraria. Yeah. Uh, but there's a hundred powerful uh, items that it just says. Um, it's like a jetpack. Uh, you know, sc- sort of reminds me of Metroid more than. Um, yeah, it has that Metromania vania type of feel to yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. And you can buy different items, and uh, I didn't buy it. Uh, I actually bought King Arthur's Gold instead, uh, which I have been having a lot of fun with, so I don't regret that. But this this is on my list. It is on my list. Is it multiplayer? Uh, R- Riggy's in the chat right now uh, saying, saying, oh my gosh, this looks ridiculous. And it does. It looks a lot of fun. And um, there is a four-pack available. I guess it's uh, $30. If it's four-pack, I would imagine that means you can play four t- at a time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, it comes with the... When they, I guess the game's now officially out. They said that it comes with like a four-player multiplayer, oh um, my and then like, gosh, you I like a local mu- local multiplier for two people. Oh so. man! So the thing about this game that's really cool is that when you die, goodbye your character. Um, when you die, it's permanent death, and oh, you have to no. start. A, you have to start again. Uh, and, and each t- it's roguelike, and each time is a new experience, and you get new items again. So sort of like Spelunky, right? Sort of like you know, mm-hmm. you, it's permanent death, and you gotta start again. Um, bring up the three friends to the fight. There it is. I don't believe I uh, I saw that part of the video, um, but oh my gosh, this game! There's leveling up. There's dings. There's big monsters to fight with a bunch of friends. I, I man, okay, so it's four dollar. It's thirty dollars for a four pack. I'm down. I'll I'll pitch in if somebody wants to. I would totally pitch in to do that. I mean, it says Steam Greenlight. It's already on Steam. Preggy says he will buy this for us. Um, I think we owe, if he does that, we owe him 
<laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, if that's the case, we all need to play together. You let us know, and we'll play. You know, I'll be on. I'm going to be streaming video games tomorrow. Um, tomorrow night, if you if you want to do that, Reg. Uh, and for those watching, I'll be on tomorrow night. And if you do that for me, I'll, I'll be playing Risk of Rain, just straight up. And I'll play it with you, man, all night. Because um, I don't have to go until 11.30 in the morning to work. going to work the late shift on Thursday. Um, Craig, do you want to play this game? That's I do. Do you want to play it three-player co-op? Three-wheel three co-op? Third wheel I co-op? would. That sounds really fun. I would totally do that. But next week I go on vacation to Florida. Yeah, and I know you won't be able to really stream uh, tomorrow yeah. since you'll be busy packing and stuff. So yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Um, I, I love. I, I played this. I started this video, and Reggie was like, "Sold." He he thought it looks so, and it looks a, like a lot of fun. Um, I think you could play that game for a long time. And 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 Reggie, if you want to play, if you want to buy Hammer Watch for four dollars and fifty cents too, <laughs> we could play that game. It looks awesome, I and mean, that's a really fun game as well. Um. Yeah, so there's Risk of Rain, and then as I said earlier, King Arthur's Gold. It's it's, it's Sophie's choice of pixel art video games right there, um, and I chose King Arthur's Gold as my favorite. Um, <laughs> I but you're gonna get Risk of Rain. I'm gonna get the best of both worlds, right? Oh, Hammer Watch four pack for twenty four dollars on Steam. Is it is it uh, on sale on Steam? Uh, I'm looking. I'm just looking at the Hammer Watch website right now. Oh really? And it just has like the four pack for twenty four dollars. Cross well, let me think. DRM if you bought too. nine, eight, I mean, you could get four, uh, four of them for eighteen bucks on the humble store right now. So, oh, you can. Okay. Yeah, Because yeah. it's four dollars and fifty cents. Um, really quick, uh, for those who aren't aware, uh, there was a a terrible typhoon in the Philippines, caused a lot of damage. I don't know if you've seen this kind of stuff that it's been that it caused. It's I, I can't look at that stuff. It makes me so sad. It it, it, I, it breaks my heart because like. The, like they just are just they have nothing it just hurts to just yeah. watch just to look at that stuff it, it sucks. does hurt it's 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 pretty awful there was a lot of damage caused and um but there's been a lot of support what's funny yeah. i just watched an episode of the colbert report i'm just gonna say mm -hmm. this because we're on topic i'll bring it back to video games um <laughs> uh america donated 14 million dollars in relief um, if I remember the statistic correctly, China donated one hundred thousand dollars, and Colbert was like, "Man, basically, in a nutshell, is like, wow, China's being pretty stingy. I bet Colbert fans can do better, right?" And so the Colbert fans are trying to to raise oh more than China to out donate <laughs> China, basically. Um, but coming back to that, Twitch is also doing a sale of T-shirts, which one hundred percent of the profits will go to the Red Cross Relief Fund. Uh, for Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. And what you could get is these sweet-ass shirts. Uh, they're $18. I'm sure there's tax and shipping involved there. but So it's probably going to even out to $20, $21, $22. Yeah. They come in sweet-ass red, sweet-ass yellow, sweet-ass blue, and sweet-ass purple. Uh, purple probably going to be the, uh, the go-to choice since that is Twitch's color. And it's really cool. It's a really cool purple. Um, and on the yeah, back... Yeah, probably get the purple shirt. <laughs> uh, it, if you see here on the back, it does say proce proceeds for this shirt went to Typhoon Haiyan, Red Cross Disaster Relief. And then you have the Twitch symbol on the front there. Really beautiful. Like I said, it comes in uh, red, yellow, blue, and purple. Red's pretty great. I mean, look at that color. Um, eh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Are you? I really want one. I think it's cool as Twitch. No pressure. I mean... There's so many things that you could donate to help them out. You don't need to buy a t-shirt. It could just be a dollar or five dollars. But it's always good when this comes around. To so it's for a sweet shirt. Why not? It's for a sweet shirt. Why not? Just get the sweet shirt. And it goes to charity. Win. Win. It's video game related. It's support. You know, it's it's Twitch. You get to wear a sweet Twitch shirt. Um, I don't know. Every, every little bit counts, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking as far as that goes. You know, so there's that. If, you, if, you, if you're interested in helping out, you can do that in a video game related way. See, I brought it around. I brought it around. Kept on topic. This is about full video circle. Games. <laughs> full circles. Um, now, Craig, I gotta ask you. I know you're happy with your PlayStation 4. Was there ever, was there ever a doubt? Um, what future games are you looking forward to? You know, have Knack and Killzone. That's basically, uh, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm actually kind of like intrigued by the the FIFA game. Like I'm not a big sports guy. You know, but the game looks really fun. You know, I hate sports games. You know this, Craig. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> FIFA though may change that. Um, it looks fun, and I don't know why. Tell you what. <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy 36, uh, Craig. Uh, you, no, you're, you're behind the times, Reggie. They're up to like 48 right now. Yeah, they're up to 49 right now. Yeah. Um, is there? I know because there's Destiny. That's sort of. Oh, let's let's talk about this Uncharted trailer, right? Yeah. Um. Uncharted trailer. I've read some comments, and and people are thinking a new protagonist. If you haven't seen the new teaser, it's like what four fifty seconds long. Yeah, it's not and that it, long. And it's definitely not Nolan North's voice through it. Mm -hmm. People are saying this new protagonist. I think personally, it's the new antagonist. It's that's what I'm. That's what everyone is like. I don't know why people are freaking out. Like how it's like a new protagonist. Like the guy sounds obviously pissed off. He sounds very <laughs> <laughs> angsty uh, yeah, over like, being left what to, protagonist to die. Would be like. I'm gonna get you. Go to hell. It's not like super gruff and like it just it just sounds really cool because it makes me think that like I'm pretty sure Nathan Drake is back for this upcoming one. Like that's my assumption. No, I'm yeah. assuming he probably screwed somebody when he was like in his like early twenties, and now they're gonna come back to it. And you now know who it is? Gonna it's gonna be a close friend, and this is gonna turn out to be basically Nega Drake. Yeah, uh, who is like his antithesis, right? <laughs> Just basically uh, everything that Drake's not, but also somebody who's able to challenge him on the same uh, battlefield, right? Come on, that tell me I'm not right. So cool. Tell I me I'm not right. Awesome. Nega Drake, anti Drake, whatever you want to call him. Um, as far as the Order 1886, what do you think about that? I don't know if I've seen very much gameplay. Have we seen the trailer? I don't know if it's third person, first person. That we, does. You've seen the trailer. Uh, they don't have like any like real gameplay trailer. It, it just basically looks like like a witch hunter type of game. Looks like. Uh, it looks awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it seriously honest. looks really fun. I'm all for it because it just looks awesome. And it's a PlayStation exclusive, uh, so you got to <laughs> give it that. And of course, you're going to get it because it's a PlayStation exclusive. Why wouldn't you? Yep. I'm going to buy every Xbox One exclusive because that's why you buy those consoles in the end, right? Yep. Well, maybe. I mean, depending on the software, you know, there's more of an argument there. But we all we all like the the uh, system exclusives, is what I'm kind of saying. And Titanfall being one of those that I'm really excited for. It's also on for the PC though. Titanfall is. Is it? Titanfall's going to be for the PC? Did not know that. Um, Connectables 2. Uh, uh, of course. I mean, uh, you can't miss out on Connectables 2. <laughs> Connectables 2. Um, I want to pet tigers all day. Every day. Um, <laughs> uh, also, uh, with, with Xbox One, Dead Rising 3. That's going to be my day one exclusive. Mm -hmm. I know you have your kill zone. I'm going to have my Dead Rising 3. I'm really excited for that. I've heard good things about it. Um, it. It's exactly what it wants needs to be as far as a zombie game. And I'm not over it. And you know what I'm really excited for is because the tech demo or the demo they showed at San Diego Comic Con is just you can see the city for for days. Yeah. You know, no more draw distances being so shallow uh, in the distance. Uh, it's going to go on forever. Which which you know. You, people like you, PC Master Race, have had that advantage for a while with their more powerful systems. But now, uh, and, and like uh, uh, Reggie's saying right now, the Android, iPhone, tablet, mm -hmm. et cetera, integration. That's so cool. Where you can call in airstrikes or call in uh, improvements. And they're, and they're doing that basically across the board uh, with games like Watch Dogs and, and games like uh, The Division, which is going to come out, I think, to end of 2014, unfortunately. That game looks yeah. so good, but it's being delayed so far. And then Titanfall and Watch Dogs are going to come out around the same time, uh, along with Destiny. We and, are here. Uh, infamous Second Son. That game looks really cool, too. Um, also, uh, uh, Scott and I have actually been uh, uh, kind of theorizing. I don't know if you've seen the Street Fighter arcade cabinet Sony commercials. No, well, I, I They're haven't. not arcade cab. What it is is Hadouken Cabs. It's like this old-school 70s like, commercial for a cab company, and they're calling it Hadouken Cabs. And it's got like a Ryu character driving the cabs. And so you're thinking cabs, maybe cabinets. Uh, speculation might be a, a PlayStation exclusive character for Ultra Street Fighter 4, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think is too far off base. They could transfer Cole, from Street, who, who's an infamous character, from Street Fighter Cross Tekken to Street Fighter, 
right? That could be mm -hmm. an option. Maybe they could do Kratos. Maybe they could That'd do cool. Drake. Um, oh, hell yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, that's a rumor. It's something to look out for a little bit. I, I, I'm really interested to see. It. They're viral videos. They're very hush-hush, uh, uh, sort of like uh, conspiracy theory stuff. Drake the, Drake the Rapper, indeed. <laughs> I think you're thinking of a rapper. <laughs> Not Nathan Drake. Uh, Drake the Rapper. Oh, gosh. Um... So yeah, I mean, there's that to Domestic look out for. Urban Drake. <laughs> Point is, we are on the, we're here. We have, we're not, we're no longer waiting. Uh, next gen console is here, and from what Craig said, it's good. It's awesome, and I, I'm also, I'm, I kind of like the way uh, Assassin's Creed Four looks. You know, I'm just gonna get it all. It's not like yeah, it's you know, at the end of this. Uh, 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 console generation i've just like whatever it's all these games i mean i didn't even buy arkham origins and that should be a game that should have been on my list to begin with mm -hmm. i mean i should have bought that day one but even games i'm like eh it's a next it's next gen i want to play it all i want to experience it all it's, it's part of the next generation and even though assassin's creed 4 is not exclusive to next generation there's a lot more to be said for it and so i want to experience all i have not been very fond of a. Uh, uh, the Assassin's Creed series since across Assassin's Creed 2, but I'm gonna maybe get back into it. Dead Rising 3, uh, Battlefield 4 is a game I'm also gonna buy. Yes, yes, Broke City is is where I'm going to be. I, <laughs> Choo -choo. Yeah, I mean, just gonna. Just, that's what overtime's for, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, next next week I think we're gonna take a break because it's Thanksgiving. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's the day before Thanksgiving, and you will unfortunately be in Florida. So I, I don't think that's going to be possible there unless you're able to Skype on a laptop. I don't know. Uh, Probably not. <laughs> I think we're going to call that off. I'll go ahead and stream that night anyways just to supplement the material and, and entertainment, get that out there. Um, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, we got a lot out. We talked about PlayStation 4, uh, your thoughts on it. Next time, episode 12, uh, we'll be able to st stream Risk of Rain next week. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, and, and again, like I said, I'll be able to stream tomorrow as well. Um, episode 12, I will have my Xbox One. So That's we, weird to think. I know. <laughs> so next episode, I'll have my Xbox One. I'll be, have been able to play Dead Rising 3 and Battlefield 4. So I'll be able to give you impressions. I'll use those Snap apps. Uh, I will stream from my Xbox so you can see me actually play the games as well with my Kinect so you'll be able to see me. Unlike Craig, who is a fool, does not have that camera accessory for his his console. You poor, poor man. Um, that's it. Going to be it for episode 11. I am Player One Trent. You can find me on Twitter at Player One Trent. Uh, Craig, where can people find you? You can find me at AgroXCraig off of Twitter. You can also find me on Facebook. My name is Craig Knight. You can also find me off of uh, Twitch, which is Two Player Co op, which is what you're watching right now. And <laughs> YouTube, you're YouTube off of uh, Salt Pop. But yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, youtube.com slash saltpopofficial. Uh, we also have our uh, – we'll do updates on facebook.com slash saltpop, uh, which is basically the distributor of our content, a local distributor of our content. Uh, mm -hmm. You can also find our uh, uh, archived videos and articles on saltpop.net, again, our distributor. That's going to be it for episode 11, guys. We'll see you in two weeks where I will have the Xbox One, give you my impressions, we'll have more Kickstarters, we'll talk more games, and we'll have some more fun. We'll see you next time. Later. Cheers, gentlemen. <laughs>